Hi, I'm Mark Graham, Arizona Response Systems. This is part two of a video demonstrating DS Arms British Pattern L1A1 Receiver Magazine Fit. In the previous video, I demonstrated how every one of the seven receivers that I have been working with um, had significant magazine fit issues. I have remachined the magazine wells, lengthening the depth of the front notch and uh, increasing the height, well, it's upside down in the machine, so it's increasing, but I'm actually lowering the notch for the front uh, of the magazine. The notch was not able to go into its recess deep enough, and it was situated too low, too high but it's upside down in my machine, so I reverse it. Um, so the magazine would stop, it would not rotate all the way in to lock. Even in those instances where it would go all the way in, it wouldn't go into the point of latching. I use 16 magazines. I have those same 16 magazines here and the completed rifles. So here we go. This is serial number 016 Alpha. I've built it into a older, kind of half British, half Australian configuration. Magazine one. Latch is fine. Two. Latch is fine. Three. Latch is fine. Four. Latch is fine. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, now the thirties, a little boring to watch me put 16 magazines into seven different rifles, but DS Arms 
has posted basically that I'm a liar. Actually, DSA's rep used a whole lot worse language than that. Um, this is how I prove that I know what I'm talking about and they're full of shit. There are the things I'd rather be doing, but it's a credibility issue. Now remember, these mags would not fit in these receivers prior to my additional machine work. Oh, this is a uh, serial number SLR018. I built this up into a 1958 to 1962 um, British pattern with wood. And I reproduced markings on it ostensibly for the Gurkha regiments in North India and then lightly distressed the rifle to make it look worn. I actually did two of them for this one customer. Uh, this one is SLR095, same configuration. A little bit of extra, but still latched. Okay, this is SLR 071. Um, Australian wood. Is it? Yep, that's a Australian. British handguards, U.S. Um, grip for 922 compliance. Anyway, oh, I should mention on all of these receivers, the uh, lockup was insufficient between the upper and the lower receiver. The lock lever here is actually supposed to be angled backwards slightly to allow for wear, but um, I ran out of my oversize receiver locks. I have some more coming in from North Freedom Engineering to make them lock up correctly. Again, I know probably fast forwarding about now because you can probably figure out that all the magazines will fit in all the receivers because I don't ship stuff that doesn't work right. Unlike DS Arms.
SLR094. This, uh, I understand, is going to end up as a movie prop. It was an assemble only. Um, I did have to refinish a couple of the parts and then I distressed them so that it matched the worn parts. Uh, this is in just standard British configuration, uh, mostly 1959, although it has the plastic furniture. I'm not sure exactly what date England switched from the Marnell uh, to the plastic from the wood, but anyway. Tight, but I can still do it with one finger. Oops. And SLR 063, standard British configuration. I love L1A1s, they're so elegant. And last one, SLR014. Again, standard British, late configuration. a little tight. Try that again. One finger. Yeah. And there you have it. Magazines would not fit in most of these receive. Well, most of the magazines would not fit in most of the receivers prior to me remachining the magazine wells. And all of the magazines fit in my test rifle because I wanted to make sure the magazines were good before using them to demonstrate the bad receivers. And so this is an early LMT manufactured. Uh, receiver for DS arms in the Australian pattern, serial number AD0015. This is in a mostly Canadian C2 configuration. Um, does have some Australian parts on them since these parts are pretty hard to get. Kind of got to take what you can get. And I'm not going to demonstrate that all the magazines fit in this, 
just to make the point that I did test them in another DS Arms receiver back when another company was making them for DS Arms to demonstrate that the magazines themselves were sound. That's all, folks. <laughs>